Oh, holy moly. What an afternoon. The past two hours have gone by in the blink of an eye. This is the day that we've all been waiting for for quite some time. Uh, the, the anticipation was building and building and building, and we got the championship Sunday in the Premier League, and it did not disappoint. So the final standings, uh, it's literally five minutes after full time. City win 3-2, home to Villa. Liverpool win 3-1 to Wolves. So they both win, ultimately meaning City are the champions. Wow, 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 wow. So the game, the day started, Liverpool went down 1-0 to Wolves. Didn't really feel like it was going to be a problem for them. They came back and equalized in the first half to make it 1-1. City went down 2-0 and were down 2-0 for most of the game. Came back and scored three within the space of 5-10 minutes. Just an absolutely unbelievable afternoon in the Premier League. City get the championship. Liverpool falls short, so, so short of the domestic treble. One point behind City. I'm not, you know, I've said before, I'm not a Reds fan. I, I, I do appreciate the way that they play. I love watching them play more so than I enjoy watching city play. I can't necessarily put my finger on why that is, but yeah, I kind of feel bad for them. They were chasing history here going for the domestic treble. And then of course they're in the champions league final next weekend against, against Real Madrid going for the quadruple, which no English team has ever done. And we'll have to wait at least another year to see that happen. But Goodness gracious almighty, that Manchester City comeback was insane. Absolutely insane. So I was sitting here, I had four games on for most of the afternoon. I had the Tottenham game on, I had the Arsenal game on, I had the City game on, I had the Liverpool game on, kind of keeping score, uh, keeping track of all the other games to see what was going on in the relegation race as well. So like I said, Villa took the lead in the 37th minute. Could go up 1-0. And then Coutinho in the 70th minute put Villa up 2-0. So right after Villa went up 2-0, or right about when they went up 2-0, Mo Salah had an opportunity to win or to put Liverpool ahead 2-1. Um, a long ball was played to him. It got past the defender, Willie Bolly. And it looked like he was going to be one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, cut inside to his left, and it was cleared out. That was the moment for me that was like, okay, it's over. Like, it's it's over. Like, that was their chance. Because even at that point with City losing 2-0, Liverpool still needed to win. If Mo Salah scores that goal right then and right there, that news circulates around the Etihad, and that nervous energy that was in Anfield all afternoon transfers all the way over to Manchester from Liverpool. And I guess that's kind of like the beautiful thing about Championship Sunday, especially nowadays with how fast information can circulate. It's that energy transfer. It's it's a real thing. That energy transfer, like I just said, it would have gone from Liverpool. And I'm not exactly sure how far it is from Liverpool to Manchester. I can't imagine it's that far, maybe like 50 miles. But that literally that energy would have transferred that distance into the stadium at the Etihad. If so, if, if Mo Salah scores that goal, I think, I think things end differently. I don't know because Ilkay Gundogan came on for Manchester City. He came on for Bernardo Silva, and I was like, this is an interesting change. I was like, Ilkay is he doesn't get he doesn't. I don't think from like the casual fan, he doesn't get the credit that he deserves because he's a phenomenal player. So he came on, and I, I had a gut feeling that that was going to be the change for City that 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 got things going. And certainly, he came on. He scored in the 76. He scored uh, the winning goal. So they scored in the 76 with Gundogan, 78th with Rodri, and then Gundogan wins the game in the 81st minute. And then for the last you know 10, 15 minutes of the game, from the 81st minute to the 90, 94th, City just killed the game. So, I mean, hats off to City. I wanted to see Liverpool win, but what an exciting title race that we got to see this year. This is a, this feels like the first time in forever that we've gotten 
this opportunity to like to to have the season come down to the last day of games, and not just for the title race, but for the top four race and the relegation race. All all three races, there were two teams that were not playing each other. You know, games in all all parts of England that had a direct impact. So Leeds and Burnley and their games, Arsenal and Everton, and then Tottenham and Norwich, and then of course City playing via Liverpool playing Wolves. Like it's it just it's incredible. This is why I love this game so much because th- you don't get this anywhere else. You don't get this in the NFL. You don't get this in 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 the, in, in professional basketball. Major League Baseball, kind of sometimes it can come down like this on the last day of the regular season. But ultimately, the and like that's the thing about America, the 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 end of the regular season, it doesn't matter. What matters is the postseason. And since there is no postseason in the Premier League, it comes down to that last game. This was the last game. There were no more there are no more games after today. Not for 12 weeks. For three months. There are no games. And everything came down to today. For those 90 minutes here this afternoon, everything was on the line for six different teams. And that is absolutely beautiful, but also heartbreaking. It's lovely and disparaging. It's football, and it's awesome. <laughs> it is so awesome. So, um, yeah, really, really crazy. Liverpool, of course, still have Real Madrid coming. City season is wrapped up they fell short of the champions league of course but they they did get the premier league trophy again it it just the thing that i i was thinking about at full time watching city dribble out the clock like why couldn't they have done this in the champions league why do they struggle to do this in the champions league with pep guardiola because pep obviously the players are the ones making it happen on the field but pep is the puppet master pulling the strings and he's he's the best at what he does. Why do they struggle so much in the Champions League? I know, like coming down, like looking at it objectively, them playing Aston Villa today and scoring those three goals, like them doing that was reminiscent of what Real Madrid did to them. You know, and I I still think Manchester City is a better team than Real Madrid. But goodness gracious Almighty! So final table. 93 points for Manchester City, 99 goals scored, 26 given up, 73 goal difference, 29 wins, 6 draws, 3 losses. Liverpool, 28 wins, 8 draws, 2 losses, 94 goals scored, 26 given up, 92 points. The thinnest of margins. It's it's insane. I thought this was going to kind of come down to a similar situation to the 2012 race between United and City and it was close not exactly the same situation that situation probably will never be replicated because it was so insane for those of you who don't know it came down to goal difference between City and United they they finished level on points and City got the last goal and literally the dying seconds Sergio Aguero go look it up if you don't know what I'm talking about just search Aguero with like 10 O's on YouTube and you'll find the video that I'm talking you'll find the clip um unbelievable uh the not so great news for myself tottenham and arsenal both won uh arsenal needed norwich to just get a result nil nil would have done the job as long as arsenal won uh tottenham ended up winning five nil arsenal won five one but again it doesn't matter because we missed the premier or we missed the champions league um It sucks. I feel like a lot of Arsenal fans are going to be incredibly disappointed about this. We're going to look at the last couple of games. The last two games specifically being um, Newcastle and Tottenham and say if we we just kind of win or even a result in either of those games, things would have been different. If we had drawn Tottenham, things would have been massively different, but that's not how it worked. Uh, you could do that with with any number of games. You can go back to Brighton on on April 9th or Crystal Palace on April 4th, you know. Um Burnley back on January 23rd. There's just so many different like that that's just how thin the margins we lost to Everton on December 6th, bottom of the table team. We lost to United on December 2nd. 
so many different circumstances that could have changed the outcome of the season. But it came down to the last game. Arsenal did their job, and they needed Tottenham. They needed Norwich to hold up their end of the bargain, but Tottenham were in the better spot today. If you're coming down to the last game of the season, Tottenham and City both showed that it's better to have fate in your hands rather than having to hope for someone else to do the job for you. So uh, there are lessons to be learned for this young Arsenal team, but uh, part of me thinks that it's a good thing that we missed out on the Champions League because I don't know that this team is quite ready. Uh, it depends on who we could. It, it, it would have come down to who we can get in the summer to strengthen the squad. But like, there's not a realistic chance that we're going to, we would have gone and won the Champions League next year. I don't think that would be very realistic to expect. I think they could have gotten to the group stages and that would have been awesome. But again, just the project that Arteta has been building, this is a massive step up because we finished ninth, eighth and ninth in the past two years. The season started terribly with those three consecutive losses. You know, uh, 2-0 to Brentford, 0-2 to Chelsea, 5-0 to Manchester City, three games in, sitting in relegation form. It was looking bleak. Came back one three in a row, get us back on level ter- peg pegging. But there's just not enough as of yet for this team to really take the next step. So again, it's just it's gonna come down to who we can sign. I really like a lot of a lot of Arsenal fans online are not sold on Granite Xhaka. I still love Xhaka. I think we do need more midfield depth. I like Xhaka and Partey. Odegaard is the future of our number 10 spot. Um, I love our young attackers that we have on the wing with Saka, Smith Rowe, and Kedia has stepped up here at the end of the season. Martinelli, obviously a world-class striker would make an absolute difference. I like our defense. Uh, not having Kieran Tierney here at the end of the season hurt. I love our goalkeeper. I love everything that we have in place, but to me, it just seems like uh, we're missing a world-class striker. We're missing midfield depth. That's it. Maybe some defensive. St- uh, Nuno Tavares, he he had a couple of tough games here towards the end of the season, but he did step up and play pretty well here in the last couple of games specifically. Tommy Asus came back and played well. Cedric came. Cedric has been phenomenal this like the last you know three two three months or whatever that it's been. But it just comes down to depth, and this was this race for Arsenal was. Very was was just a big stepping stone in the progression because things don't things aren't just gonna happen overnight. You need that progression. You need the work. You need the stepping stones to get where you want to go. And ultimately, that's the promised land. Um, I don't think we're gonna contend for championship status next season, especially with City getting Holland. They're not really gonna be losing anybody. Liverpool has some question marks in their attacking line. Their midfield is starting to age a little bit. You know, Chelsea are always going to be there. Tottenham looks to be coming up. They with with Conte the way that they've been playing the end of the season. United United is United. We don't know what the future holds for them specifically, but I do like where Arsenal is at better than where they're at. So, I, top 4 I think is now the expectation 100% for next year. It's just who are we going to dethrone? Is it going to be Chelsea or Tottenham? I don't think it's going to be Liverpool. City are definitely are almost a lock for top four, probably top two. So it just there are question marks, but this has been a very very fun season. It's been fun to watch this team grow, um, and I'm just excited, man. I'm just really excited about the future of this young club. They they got me back. They've got me finding my love for for the club again because it's been a tough, tough, tough couple of years. We've not played in the Champions League since 2016. We felt irrelevant for the longest time. I, we're not irrelevant anymore. It's just not. Arsenal shouldn't be irrelevant. We will not be irrelevant any longer. Mikel Arteta, I love you. Thank you for bringing this club back to where we're supposed to be. Let's Let's go get it next year. Um, and then, so the relegation race, Burnley do indeed go down, Leeds stay up. 
Um, I wasn't really keeping track of those games because <laughs> watching four games at once is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> but uh, Leeds 2-1 over Brentford and Burnley lose to Newcastle 2-1. So Jesse Marsh, my man, you stayed up. I, I, I had them pegged to stay or to go, go back down. And Jesse Marsh had a hell of a job to do over the past couple of months, but he, he got the job done. Um, going back to when he came in, I think his first game was like Norwich two, one, three, two. So they two wins, a draw, a win. Draw, lost to City, lost to Arsenal, lost to Chelsea. Draw, win to close out the season. They got the job done. It was it was a tough job to do, but they stay up. I'm very happy to see them stay up, and I, I'm excited about Jesse Marsh's future with Leeds. Sucks for Burnley. Um, when I saw that in real time that they were they were slotted to go down on live results. A uh, thought popped into my head that they shouldn't have gotten rid of Sean Dyke, but they did. They're going down. I'm not saying that's the reason they're going down, but again, I that's just what I thought of. So who knows? I'm not saying that I'm right. Obviously, I I'm almost never right, and I I'm not the kind of person to to sit here and say like, oh, just because I thought this is this is this is what's uh, this is what they should have done. Like I don't know what they should have done. Maybe they, if they kept Sean Dyke, maybe they still go down. I don't know, but they're they're going down regardless, and Leeds are staying up. So absolutely fun close to the season. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and transition. We've got an interview with my friend Dylan. Uh, we work together. We coach. We work together with soccer shots. We uh we coach two to eight year olds together, and we're both massive Arsenal fans. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the game. Um, the Everton Arsenal game, uh, I don't think that was the only game he was watching. So we can talk a little bit about the Tottenham result and just the season in general, but, uh, thank you for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed championship Sunday just as much as I did because it was a lot of fun. So, um, we got one more big game coming up. Obviously the champions league, we'll talk about that a little bit, um, maybe over the week. We'll, we'll we'll release a short little episode with my thoughts on what to expect, and then maybe another one, um, after after the game next week. We'll see what happens. Uh, I would like to see Liverpool win. Just keep it in keep it in England because you know I'm an I'm I'm a fan of an English team. The Premier League is primarily what I watch. I keep track with some of the other leagues, but I watch the Premier League more than I watch any other league indefinitely or not indefinitely, but um you know so thanks for tuning in i hope you enjoy the interview with my friend dylan and uh as always peace and love family what's up everybody this is uh this is my friend dylan we uh we coach together with soccer shots gotten to know each other a little bit we're also just so happens we're both massive arsenal fans that was like one of the first things that we uh that we discovered about each other we had our first meeting or like my not your first but my first meeting with soccer shots in fort wayne yeah. Um, I was wearing my Arsenal jersey that I have, right? <laughs> oh, my, I lose, there it is, right? Behind <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I got that set up on my bed so I could show it off. And, and yeah, you and Chris were talking about, you know, some of the games that were going on that afternoon. I was like, oh, wait, you're an Arsenal fan? What's up? Yeah, I, I think I, I pulled I think down Arsenal, my jacket. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think they, they played or won earlier in the day or something like that. They were playing. Um, I think. I think we lost that game. I can't remember what ga what game it was. That would have been like back in March. It was a, a Monday afternoon game. Palace was it? Palace? Yes, it was the Crystal Palace game. Oh, we lost three. In the yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. and and in retrospect, that was actually a really important game. If we had, if we could have won that game, things would maybe be a little. Well, bit if, if we had won, if we would have beat them or Brighton or Southampton, I think we lost all three of those games. Yeah, that and like. So obviously, um, we we won today, but so did Tottenham. So like, like we needed to win, but we also needed Tottenham to lose. So we we missed out on the Champions League. So th that's the funny thing about yeah. how an, a season ends like this. We we lost thirteen games. So you could go back to any of those thirteen games and been like, oh, if we had well, at least if won, we'd won this won, one, won. if we won one of these games, things change massively. Right. But 
Uh, it comes down to the end of the season. We do what we're supposed to do, but so do Tottenham. Unfortunately, we miss out on it. Yeah. Um, and it's just the way it goes. So uh, it was, it was, it was really cool to see us go out inside. I mean, obviously, it didn't end the way that we wanted to, but we went out in style today. We won five goals. Yeah. We won five one. I think that's tied for the most goals that we've scored all year. Um, uh, I'm looking at the fixtures list. The only time we ever scored five in a game this season besides today was December 26th against Norwich, who, okay, ironically, we needed to win today, and they lost 5-0. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's just tough because, again, we started historically bad, you know. So and, bad. Like, there was no thought of even potentially getting top four ever at that time, and we had a good absolute stretch for a while. Still lost games that we shouldn't have. Or we were pretty inconsistent still, but we were get we were grinding results, you know. And like you said, it's just the end of the season, that last stretch, losing to Palace, Brighton, and Southampton. I think we lost three in a row. Teams that we should definitely be beating, at least get six or seven points out of those. Um, and again, like Palace is a decent side; they're tough, but um, Brighton and Southampton, that I don't. There's there's not too much going there with those teams like, you know like I that um, Trussard I believe on Brian yep. like yep. he he's been pretty solid but those are games that we have to win like really all three but definitely those other two and yeah and I'm I'm pretty sure Crystal Palace uh, we we drew Brighton back on October second and then we the next game was against Crystal Palace we drew them so they both kind of gave us a little bit of trouble this year. And yeah. then, and it just so happens that those are two games again here at the end of the season that really made a huge difference. Um, that was over a month ago, back in April now. But like you texted me saying, like, yeah, it sucks that we missed out on it, but like the future's bright, man. Because this is such a young, yeah. like, this feels like this is a historically young team. We had two players under the age of twenty-one that scored yeah. double-digit goals in the Premier League. Yeah. That's that's an insane. That's Smith Rowe and Saka. Saka, yeah, yeah. And then no, Mark, I don't remember how many Martinelli ended up with, but he had his fair share. Like he was, he yeah. was a bright shining light too. Um, no, it's definitely something to build on. And again, like the last couple of years, I think we finished like eighth or something like that. The last yeah. couple of years, um, yeah. But yeah, getting fifth is, is still solid, especially coming from where we were. It's just. It just hurts because it's the way that we didn't make it, you know? Yeah. Like, I, we got down a man against Tottenham really early in that that second game, and that really, that really, that, that hurts. It's hard to win games <laughs> that get results when you go down a man. Yeah. And, was, go ahead. No, I, I like, like you, to, to your point, like, the, just talking about the way that it all happened, because after the yeah. Leeds game, after the West Ham and Leeds game, actually four in a row, we beat Chelsea, we beat United, we beat West Ham, and we beat Leeds. And at that point in time, it was completely in our hands. Yeah. And, and it goes back to that I, that Tottenham game. I had a podcast episode a couple of weeks ago with a – this is wild. I've, I've got like a, a pseudo friend over in Ireland who's a Tottenham fan. Like we connected yeah. through – he makes YouTube videos, and I've made some YouTube videos about my experiences going to U.S. games, and that's what he's done. So that's how we met. He's a Tottenham uh-huh. fan, and like a month and a half ago, he came on my podcast. He was like, "There's no way Arsenal are gonna finish top four, blah blah blah." Like Tottenham's, we've got it in the bag. And then it came to that game. I was like, "Man, all we need is just one point here. Let's get a draw, because then we we have one more that Tottenham loses on too. So, so yeah, we, if we, if, yeah. if we draw that game and and then we uh, win again today, it doesn't really matter what happens in Newcastle. We are in yeah. the Champions League. That's how it would have gone down. Yeah. But it, it sucks. But at the same time, like I said, I was recording before you jumped in here. I yeah. don't like, yeah, it's on paper. It's really nice to be in the Champions League, but I don't know yeah. what we would have been able to realistically expect out of this team in the Champions League at the same yeah. time. So, I think it, go ahead. So, I mean, I don't know, like it, being in the Europa League, not exactly where you want to be, but it's like it is the next step. Right. Yeah. Like going from not playing in Europe to playing, you know, in European competition and having those extra games to one, build the stamina to go an entire season. Because, like, yeah. I feel like the project is working up towards the level of a city or a Liverpool. And, like, I can see we are on that path. Like, it's not going to happen overnight. Like, when Jurgen Klopp came to Liverpool, it wasn't an overnight thing, but look what they've turned yeah. it into. 
Yeah, so, like and again, like they were City and Liverpool, they were uh, maybe three, four, five years ago, they were pretty decent size consistently making the Champions League. But yeah, they weren't even close to what they are now. No. And I think, like you said, Klopp and Pep, just the development of these players, especially these young ones um, like Foden with City um, and Liverpool, like um, trying to think like um, Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott and um, Simi Kass. Again, not players I get a whole bunch of time right now, but still like those are two of the best managers in the world, you can argue. And they've definitely um, – a whole, whole lot of credit to them because, yeah, these players are world-class and obviously De Bruyne developed from Wolfsburg coming here. And I think he's one of the best midfielders in the world. I he think best. the most complete. He's the best. And, um, yeah, like, it's amazing the transformation from, like, again, like four or five years ago to now, like, those two sides. And, um, again, th- those two sides, I feel, are still miles ahead. Yeah, like, in 100, 100%, 100%. But, um, no – uh, from the Arsenal season, I definitely um, – I don't want to just take away the one negative of not making the Champions League. There are tons of positives. Like you said, you have a competition. These young players like Saka, Smith Rowe, Odegaard was unbelievable this season. Um, so, so unbelievable. I think he was the best player on the pitch today. Um, well, he, and like, he has been for like over the past three, four months. It's almost every single game. It's everything goes through him, and he's been like the motor – that keeps us clicking yeah. on offense and even his motor getting back and defending uh, in the front of our midfield triangle is really impressive because that's something that you don't see out of that attacking Everybody. midfielder. Yeah. You know, like he's not, we play the four, two, three, one or a four, three, three. And either way, like you need that third midfielder to give it all and go, go a hundred percent both ways. And he does that. Like I, I see a lot of Arsenal fans comparing him to Ozil and like maybe Ozil was a little bit, silky attack time. but yeah but yeah. he was lazy at times and like he didn't get back and he didn't defend and that's the difference between him and Odegaard and I yeah. hate saying that because Ozil was like one of my favorites yeah and, and he was great like for years he's actually he was there for a long time but no I there's definitely something to that because again not every attacking player wants to go back and defend and will give 100 percent every single time you know and because of the day obviously just want to like wait like once we get the ball, then they'll go forward and stuff like that. Um, create some outlet passes, but um, no, the, the work right he has, um, that's definitely um, impressive. Because again, not like you said, not everybody, not every attacking midfielder is like that. No, no question about it. Not at all. Um, so another thing I wanted to mention is um, a couple of weeks. We actually had more wins than che- both Tottenham and Arsenal had more wins than Chelsea this year. But obviously, we came behind them in the table and I remember a couple weeks ago I saw an article I think it was from the athletic about a lot of like people were kind of like talking about like the inconsistency of Chelsea Tottenham and Arsenal and to a larger extent United yeah the 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 entire like the argument of this article in particular was that's kind of what you expect that's what you should expect out of teams that are like in that three through six positioning is like they're yeah. inconsistent. And that's what makes the difference between them and title winning teams like city yeah. and Liverpool. So like, I, like I, we lost, like I said, we lost 13 games this year. Yeah. That seems I like a like, lot of games to lose. Well, that's like a third of the season. Yeah. 100%. And, and like, I feel, I think we only drew three or four times the whole season. Yep. 22, three and 13. So like, <laughs> that's crazy. it's crazy. It was, it was basically, when it was basically win or lose the entire season um yeah. ex- except for those three times and i think like going forward looking at next year that's going to be one of the things that they're going to have to work on to create that mentality of going from losing games to winning games and then turning draws into losses because that's what city and Liverpool, that's what city did today they went from a losing position and in the matter of 6 minutes were up yeah. three go- three two liverpool similar story they went they went down right away came back, tied the game, and then right there at the end of the game, won it, scored two extra goals to get get themselves ahead. Like, like that's the crucial next step that we need to take. Um, And then I think we'll be cooking with gas because our defense is pretty solid. Our midfield is pretty – I love our midfield. I I like Xhaka a lot. Partey, he's great. 
we, we, I think they, they've got the legs for two or three more seasons. So now it's just about getting a world-class striker up there yeah, no and doubt. No. getting a little bit of depth in the midfield. Yeah. And like, I feel like I've never I'm completely been sold on Xhaka, but this season he's really won over the fans and he, he has been impressive this season, um, which he, I think he needed to be because obviously not too long ago, there was talks about him leaving. And again, he was exiled by the fans and all that stuff, but He's definitely um, been impressive. So, yeah, he's definitely um, – I like him and the team. And, um, yeah, um, Partey, very happy with him. Um, I think Ramsdale's done great in goal, um, replacing um, Leno. I think he's done really well. Um, Gabriel is solid. Um, C- Cedric. I don't know. We, I know we got Ben White. I don't know how much he's been playing. Um, I don't really he, – he, He's been injured, and then he picked up the red against yeah. Tottenham. So, he was – he was out for, I think, maybe the last two games, definitely the last game. I, I, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know if that suspension carried over to today. But even Rob Holding, Rob yeah, Holding's been playing holding pretty well. Been, yeah, I think I'm um, holding got sent off in a Tottenham game, I think. Oh, it was. I You're think right. it was. It was, it was, it was holding. holding. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of. But, I mean, other than, other than that Tottenham performance, because he did pick it, like, they were two silly fouls. Like, yeah. It, it I was at the Arsenal bar there in Denver and everyone was furious about both yellow cards, but I was trying to be the voice of reason. I was like, well, yeah, I, can I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Especially that, that one was denying the, the goal scoring chance um, by the Tottenham guy going in. But yeah, I, I, I wasn't really too upset with either foul. Cause I, I get how they were, they could be yellows. But yeah, um, yeah it was no um, one thing I wasn't, um happy about was when um Bellerin left for Batiste because I really liked him but um I'm, I'm trying to thank um our fullbacks I'm kind of drawing a blank who are Tom, all our fullbacks right now Tommy Tommy Asu will play yeah, on either the right or the left Cedric yeah. is pretty much only on the right Tavares has yeah. been filling in for Tierney and then Tierney has been out for like a couple of weeks now because he, he he hurt his leg uh, yeah. on on international duty for Scotland Tierney is one of the best yeah. left backs in the world. I, I love honest Tierney to God. Lot. He's fantastic. And I love Tierney. Yes. Like I, I Tavares, like he there were a couple of games after right after Tierney went down. I think it was in that three game stretch where we lost those games with uh, Crystal Palace, Brighton, and Southampton. I think it was specifically the Crystal Palace game that Nuno had a very, very bad game. But ever since then, like he's he's picked it up. He's played better. He actually scored a goal, I think. It might have been the Leeds game or the West Ham game. Yeah, I think I might have remember seeing his name on the score sheet. It was – no, it wasn't either of those games, but he did – he scored a yeah, goal. He did get a goal. Yeah. Not it might have It might have been United or Chelsea, honestly. It was – It was the he scored the first goal against United uh, three okay. minutes into the game. Um, Like – he and he's another young player. He's not – Yeah. You know, so well, like he's he's a, he's a he, I think he's a, a serviceable backup left back. Yeah. Um, and yeah. like just building on the, these performances here at the end of the season and seeing how that will carry over for him. I, and, I just I think we're in a good place. What were you going to yeah, say? And, um, uh, as a whole, like actually um, Arsenal in general, we were fantastic today. But Tavares, he looked really confident on the ball. He was going out of the finish, creating chances like he had a great game today. Um, especially, I know it's Everton, you know, but I was really impressed with, with him. Um, he played, I think arguably the best game of the season for him so far. Like he was, he was fantastic today. So no, he, I agree. He's definitely, um, I think, um, second tier right now, but definitely a pretty decent, um, backup left back behind, um, Tierney. Um, yeah. Yeah. So just I, I'm very optimistic about the future. Uh, it's, uh, our top two goal scorer scores in the Premier League were Saka and Smith Rowe with 11 and 10. Odegaard had six. Martinelli had five. Gabrielle actually had. Yeah, he, he had Gabrielle had as many goals as Alexander Lacazette all season long. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's crazy. Insane. Yeah, and Kedia actually had four two in 20 games. So, like I said, we're we're definitely missing the striker. And Kedia had a strong end to the season, but yeah. He's kind of yeah, inconsistent, was, and you need a consistent scorer up top. Yeah. So if we can get somebody 
like we've been linked with Jesus. I think Jesus would be a really good signing. I think he would fit in really well. He's got a little bit of a relationship already with Mikel Arteta because of Arteta's oh, he was a days city. at City. Yeah. So I, I think it would, I think it would be a good fit. Um, so it's, there's some question marks going into the summer, but if we can turn those question marks into like exclamation points, then I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be okay. Um, you know, yeah, I'm not gonna... I think, um, yeah, definitely like that's on his way out, but, um, um, Paolo Dybala, I, I've heard rumors about him too. And, um, oh, I, I, I've heard rumors like, um, cause he, he's leaving um, Juventus and I think there's been talks about possibly him coming in. Um, and I, I would really, him or Jesus, I would be very happy with, um, and again, I know transfer rumors, like they can change from day to day, but I I've heard rumors about him too being a potential candidate to come in. That would be exciting. And I mean, like either way, like as long as we get somebody, there aren't always a lot of strikers are few and far between. Like obviously mm-hmm. like the biggest striker has been taken off the table and is heading <laughs> to the, the premier league champions yeah. in just a couple of months. But uh, we were never really in contention to get no, in anyway. There's no way. But I think, I think, you know, as long as we find the right guy, he doesn't have to score like 30, 20, 20, 30 goals a season. Oh, He's just no. got to give us like 10, 15, because yeah. if if we can get goals out of Saka, Martinelli, and Smith Rowe, like we have been. And Odegaard, yeah. And Odegaard. Four, like, four main guys, yeah. Like the best teams don't have to rely on one single guy scoring all the goals. It should be yeah. kind of spread out because that means the ball's moving around and everybody trusts each other rather than it's just rely. Yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. So – uh, and that's kind of how we were this season. So we just need to go from like, okay, so we scored 61 goals this year. City scored 99. Liverpool scored 94. We're not going to jump up to that many goals next year. But if we can get into the Chelsea region of 76, that's where they ended up. We Even Tottenham scored yeah. eight more goals than us. If we can just take, get another 10 goals, add another 10 goals onto that and yeah. store up our defense a little bit more, things will be a lot more promising. And I think we'll end up next year where we want to be in Champions League places with a realistic chance and actually doing something in the Champions League rather than just being there. Yeah, I feel like um, we should definitely be competing for top four. Um, no, no question for for years to come. And uh, I, we've been knocking on the door the last few years. We just haven't finished as strong as we needed to. But um, definitely in the Champions League, you never know what the group stage draw. There's definitely always weaker groups and there's better group so depending on where we're at and how we're playing at the time i think we could definitely make the knockouts and again depending on the draw like you you just don't know who you could draw and maybe we win a knockout tie but i agree just making the champions league and just um like you said i just with the groups you just don't know you know if, if you're in the competition you just don't know and you get some of these teams out of nowhere who just go crazy um, like a Villarreal who hasn't yeah. made top four in their league. Um, I think they got seventh or eighth this year. And um, Ajax um, a few years ago sh- probably should have made the final, you know. That was a crazy end to that Tottenham game. But oh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely one or two surprise teams every year that, like, well, like make noise. And, again, depending on how things shake out, I think it's possible that we could be one of those teams. Again, I don't expect to win or, or anything like that. I think that's unrealistic, but again, to like get in and just, again, make the knockouts and see what happens. Yep. And I think like, that's a big thing. Just having realistic expect expectations. Yeah. Um, and so like as going forward, the expectation is getting over the hump, finishing in the yeah. top four, beating out Tottenham, potentially beating out Chelsea because they have a lot of question marks themselves. Yeah. Um, like, I, like, I like, you know, Tottenham may have finished ahead of us this year, but I like, where we're going a lot more than where they're going. Um, I like our manager more than I like their manager. Like they do have an incredible front three, but their front three is on the wrong side of, you know, like Kane is like 30, 31. Son is uh-huh. almost 30. No idea how old Kulisevsky is, but without yeah, the other I two, what is I think he he's definitely younger. Yeah. So but I feel like um, Kane and Son for years, they've been the consistent ones scoring goals. And that's a big factor of why, they're where they're at, and we're not in the Champions League because those guys, every game, it seems like they score one or two of them, like, every game. Those are the guys who, even if they don't score, they're always involved. Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and every it, goal. And, the, again, I, the, if we could get 
one or two of like maybe not quite as good as like they are, but like a pretty like you said, consistent goal scorer. Like that's the thing because Tottenham has two of those, and I think that's a big reason why they're in it. We're not just because they have that consistency scoring goals, and yeah, we've struggled with that. Yeah. Yeah, which is in the, the kind of funny thing about that is that with their manager being Antonio Conte, they're supposed to be like, you know, they play the back five. They kind of sit back a little bit. Yeah, they're more defensive, the break. Yeah. But it works for them because Kane, when he drops deep in Sans son, speed, like he'll just yeah. unleash. He Kane is such a good passer. So like he, yeah, he'll drop yeah. in and he'll play some insane balls to, to young men son and then son yeah. will either go for goal or cut it back for Kane or Kulisevsky. Yeah. And that's that's why they're so good going forward. But again, they, they only scored 70 goals. They're still 30 behind Manchester City in terms of goal scored. So well, and and they're they're, they're right there with us, right? You said we were in the sixties. <sighs> yep, we got sixty one, they got sixty nine. Okay. Um, they actually had like the goal difference is kind of substantial. They, they, they had a plus plus 29. Ours was plus 13. So, okay. But I mean, our defensive record was relatively solid, gave up a little more than a goal a game, almost yeah. scoring to a game. So we're getting there, but I think, I think next year we'll take a big leap forward and uh, we'll get back to where, where we should be. And yeah. And the thing is too, like, like you mentioned earlier with all those losses, if we could just, Say we turn four, five, six, like half of those into like draws, like all those points add up, you know, and um, it, it's crazy to lose like a third of the season, but we, we've shown that we can win games and that we can do well. It's just about, again, sometimes just grinding out those results, like obviously later in the season, like it shows how impactful those could have been. So um, definitely limiting the losses, um, getting that, that striker, that consistent striker, um, whether it be a Jesus or D baller or somebody else. And like you said, a lot of bright spots, especially with these younger players who will continue to mature and continue to um, get used to like that spotlight and do better um, in those moments. And um, there's definitely a lot of positives for yep. sure. Oh, 100%. Well, um, I just got a notification. The meeting's going to end relatively soon. I wanted to keep this huh. short. So we'll go sure. ahead and end it there. Um, thanks right. for coming on, man. It was a lot of fun. I, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited for the future. And hey, the World Cup is coming up. That's only yeah, yeah. It's only in a and, couple of months. Yeah, no, that's that's gonna be awesome too. And again, USA, their group, I think they can get out of it. Uh, I, I really think they can get second in that group. And we're we're gonna we're gonna win the group. We're gonna beat England think, and we're <laughs> that's just that that's me just it, being uh, a little overconfident. Maybe I feel like the, the best way we're gonna win the group is if me if we draw England, we both end with seven and we somehow have a better goal difference. I think that's how we win the group. I don't think we beat England, but I I filled out a bracket actually. Um and I, I assumed the last couple of playoff spots. And I have us in the quarters actually, because um we would play say we I think we're getting a second, we would play the winner of group A, which I think is the um Dutch. And we know they're not as strong as they used to be, especially up front. And I have us beating the Dutch and making the quarters. I think it's very possible with how things could shake out. But, again, there, we got a lot of good young players, too, with the national team. And, again, yeah. it's just – I feel like we're – we experiment with all these people. And I, I feel like we need to, I don't know, have more of a – more of the same guys playing all the time. Because, again, we have a lot of good youth and stuff, but it's like – do you get what I'm saying with the, we experiment all these times? It's always a change lineup. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, I under, I kind of, like, part of me understands why the coaches are doing that. But at the same time, especially in international, like, in the game in general, but especially in international play, continuity is super important because yeah. it's like, you, like, it's hard to explain, but, you know, you play a little bit, I play a little bit. But, like, when you, the more you play with another person, like, you pick up on those little intricacies like yeah. you, you get that sixth sense well, of what well, like, they're going to do and how to work together. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And when yeah. you're not, when you're not playing together frequently, especially on the international level, because you get so few games together, it really matters to get those extra games and, you know, be working together. Well, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's, it's a chemistry. Yeah. It's, it's, that's what it is. Yeah, and honestly, one of the biggest things about that is like, you know, as you look at some of the world powers in international game, like especially England, Spain, Germany, most of their core of the roster, they don't necessarily all play on the same team, but they play in the same league. So they're familiar yeah. with each other. And like, I think it was the 2014 
Germany team, seven and seven of the seven or eight of the players all played for Bayern Munich. You say of the starting eleven? Seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like that—that's insane. And that's one of the reasons why that Germany team was so good is because there's that familiarity. Yeah. Like, obviously, they're great players, but mm-hmm. to be a great team, you have to have that familiarity. Like, great players don't necessarily make a great team. Great teams come from being able to work well together and right. having that continuity, familiarity, blah 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 to you know just know how to work together and right. get the job it, done when so. it's club and country together they actually they work with each other every single day so yeah that's yeah. definitely a factor and with spain obviously you got the real madrid and barcelona you got so many yep. Spanish guys on. exactly so exactly it's like that too. yep but yeah um so yeah. you know we'll see what happens i think it starts in november december something like something that like, yeah. but yeah i'm looking um, forward to that right now before you go Who's your World Cup pick at the moment to win it? Oh you shoot, um, man, that is tough. I want to. My heart wants to say Argentina. I think. Yeah. I think. I, I talked about when the draw came out. I had a podcast I did with a buddy of mine. Um, and he lives over in Fort Wayne himself, actually. Um, I think I said Argentina when I was on there with, yeah. with him, and then partially because I that's just what I want to see. If, if it's yeah. not going to be the U.S., which is likely not going to be, I would like to see it be Argentina. Because Messi has been, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, I adore Messi. I really do. He's yeah. just a joy to watch, well, and it would be lovely to see him go out on top with with uh with Argentina and get that World Cup to his name. That's, that's the only thing he hasn't won. That's it. And, and I, Ronaldo, honestly, Ronaldo too. He's, yeah, Portugal is the best I've ever been. Portugal is. They have so many good young, good just players in general, young and old. But. No, like I, I, Messi's obviously one of the best of all time. But if he got that World Cup, that definitely enhances legacy. There's no question about it, because that's the world's greatest prize. So. Yes, sir. All right, you, who do who do you have? Um, I think Brazil. Brazil. Um, I just um not just because they're starting eleven, but the depth of their squad is insane, and um, I I think the last time they won was oh two, but you just I think. Last time in 2018, 20 of their 23, I believe, played in Europe, which is insane. And I know that they're all kind of mixed around now on the same clubs and stuff, but I really think um, Brazil, because they can do it, obviously, every single time that they're good enough, but um, I, I, I really like Brazil. Um, and um, I know there's, um, like, the Frances and the Englands, and there's a lot of other great countries who could do it, but Brazil is my feeling. Okay, yeah. So we both got South American team. It would be a switch yeah. up because it's been it's been European dominated for the yeah. past couple of years. I think going and back they, to like two thousand two or two thousand six, something like that. They could um they could meet in the semifinals. I think Brazil and Argentina. That would be I, I think. crazy. Oh my gosh, yeah. that would be insane. Yes, sir. All right, Dylan. I'm gonna go ahead and end it there. I appreciate you coming on. Um, but you, you know, I'll see you tomorrow morning. But right. <laughs> no, no, I appreciate you having having me. It's fun. I, I feel like one of those like ESPNFC pundits. You know, just talking about something. <laughs> that's that's why I do this. It get, it makes me put it gets. Uh, that was like one of my dream jobs growing up. Is like I wanted to I wanted to work for ESPN. That kind of went away after a while. But like it's nice to put on that hat every once in a while and just you know just talk it's about good. just shoot the crap about something that we that we both really love and, and enjoy, um, yeah. especially doing it with a friend. So I uh, appreciate you coming on. And uh, until next time, thanks everybody for watching, by the way, Dylan, do you have any, do you have any like social media you would care or have people to follow you on? If that's something that you're interested in or anything I could plug for you. It's not like a lot of people watch this or listen or anything, but you know, uh, just, in, just in case. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do have, um, I'll say Instagram. I think it's um, just Dylan Claus. I have a green shirt on. Um, I don't know if that helps at all, but um, I have Instagram and Facebook, really. That's all I really have. Um, Facebook, again, Dylan Claus. It'll say Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, but that, that's usually what I have. Again, Dylan, D-Y-L-A-N, Claus, C-L-A-U-S. Um, those are the two things that I um, use. Um, but, yeah. I don't know how many people are watching, but if anybody has any questions or you do or whatever, like any thoughts, then yeah, I'm up for those. All right, man. I'll put that in the, I put this on, it goes onto a couple of different podcast platforms, Spotify, Anchor, um, Overcast. Huh? 
Wait, so you're saying I could re-listen to this on Spotify? Yeah, man. That's awesome. Well, what's it under? What's the name of your podcast? The Footy Foster Podcast. Footy Foster Podcast. Okay. Yeah. No, so, that, that's awesome. Uh, I put it on I put it on YouTube, Spotify, <laughs> Anchor, Apple Music, and Apple Music automatically puts it onto another platform called Overcast. So it's on all of those platforms. Um, no, on that, my blog awesome. as well. I'm definitely gonna yeah. listen to it, and I, I'll show I'll show uh, my brother. He's a huge soccer guy too. So. Oh, who does your brother follow? Uh, PSG. Okay, okay. He he, he always has. Um, really, he's always hey, been hey, hey, good news for them. He for him, he gets to yeah. he gets to watch Messi and Mbappe for another I'm, year. Yes, I'm so happy he stayed. And that whole saga was crazy, but I'm so happy he stayed. That's that's, that's a huge deal. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. All right, well, we'll get out of here again. Appreciate right. you coming on. Thanks for watching and listening, everybody. Until next time, I'm I'm Joseph. This is Buddy Foster Podcast. This is Dylan, and uh, we'll catch everybody later.